On this episode of the Leader Wrestling Zone, we're going to talk about NWA's recent pay per view and the recent episode. We got MLW's Opera Cup tournament and the recent uh, Wednesday Night War that happened between AEW and NXT. So, for all of you over there in the infield, better be ready. I'll be hitting a whole run soon. And welcome to the Leader Wrestling Zone. Nico. Yes. <clears throat> you and I have been uh, following up with NWA ever since it first launched. Yes. I mean, so far, I've been impressed with everything they have done in their, in their promotion. How about you? Uh, yeah, for the most part, the product, the matches, the wrestlers, the talent, um, their decisions politically. Yeah. Not so much, but anyways, yeah, it's a bit so, yeah. <laughs> I have to say, I, I mean, it's completely different from yeah. others that we have watched. You know, we, I mean, yeah. we can go on with the list as much as oh, we yeah. want, yes. but end of it has a unique feature of itself. Mm -hmm. You know, and not to mention, we just saw the recent first pay per view they just put out, Into the Fire. Ooh. Have you cut? Have you catch to watch it? Well, I did, and I got everything from top to bottom. Any new champions? Oh, yeah, but well, let's go from little by little. From where we go. Okay, so it started out with Eli Drake versus Mr. Anderson. As you all know, we've been seeing those two have been mouth-bagging each other. Yeah. You know, Eli going out saying that he that Nick Aldis has been ducking him for months, you know, not oh, yeah. getting the title. And Mr. Anderson wants to prove that he's the much bigger mouth than Eli Drake. Mm. I mean, we have seen him being the bigger mouth. Oh, yeah. But yeah, so it started out with that match, and I think the entire thing was 50-50, because I wasn't sure who was going to win this one. Yeah. But the result came in, that turned out to be Eli Drake. Yeah, it had to be. Like, what was the point of that whole elusiveness with him getting in everyone's heads? Like, he's... Um, that makes him the number one contender, right? Actually, I don't know yet, because ever since that re recent... Pay, uh, epi the prior before episode... Before Into the Fire. Mm -hmm. It was supposed to be Eli Drake and Mr. Anderson to determine the number one contendership. Mm -hmm. But thanks to James Storms, that somehow weaseled his, himself in. Allowed uh... him to be the number one. So I don't know what was this match for, or it was just like one of those special matches, you know, to throw in. Oh, you okay. know, we, we've seen those t uh, from time. Then we got an uh, interview with Nick Aldis, but also we had... Another thing with James Storm with the conspiracy theories he's been putting out, uh, which you talk about outside of this thing every time. Yeah. <laughs> so James Storm was still thinking about there's a conspiracy theory going on in, in, in NWA ever since in one of the recent prior before NWA Power that mm -hmm. that he was close in winning the championship and somehow it didn't happen. So he wasn't sure what was going on, but he was having those thoughts. Then we get into a match between... The, the debut of Tasha Steeles. I heard that she's been with many promotions from NXT mm -hmm. to MLW and Impact and now NWA. She was facing against Thunder Rosa, which was interesting. You got two different Hispanic wrestlers, a Mexican and a Puerto Rican. Mm. So my money was on Thunder Rosa because <laughs> if you guys ever seen her, she's a badass. Oh, yeah. And even though she does MMA on the side, so... Thunder Rose's uh, speed and agility in, in ring reminds me of a female version of Taiji Ishimori. <laughs> yeah, but at least she doesn't spit um, the mist like he does. I mean, it would be cool to see her do it. Unless... Uh, uh, Bone Soldier Taiji Ishimori. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> At, uh, when uh, the winner for this match was Thunder Rosa, but she was not done yet. Mm. She continued with the beatdown on uh, Tasha Steeles, but... Ashley Box come out to get a little payback for herself for what Thunder Rosa and the rest of the posse have been doing. Mm. But her mistake was getting involved and allowing herself to have her arm broken. You know, you can see it was bent from the elbow. Mm. And that's when the question began because 
Ashley Box was scheduled to be in a tag team match yeah. with Allison K against either Melina, well, against Melina and uh, Marty Bell. Uh. So we'll get to that in a bit, you know. Then uh, the, the, with the whole recap with the Ricky Starks and Eric Stevens, if you all recall, <laughs> Ricky Stevens decided to tell him to shut the hell up. Oh, yeah. You know, because he talks too much. But, so that's what happened. But, you probably missed this one a lot. You wouldn't want to watch. Yeah. The question mark versus Trevor Murdoch. Ooh. But it, it, this is interesting. You, you put, if you had the chance to watch it, this is funny. Here comes the question mark. Aaron Steve's behind him dressed up in a, in a karate gi. Yes. And carrying a flag. What kind of flag? It's the Mongrovian uh, flag, where question mark is actually from. Oh, great. Basically, <laughs> they throw in a fictional country. Yes. <laughs> Basically, you see, like, a, two animals on the side, and right in the middle is the question mark. That's lovely. And, oh, my God, it was so hilarious. Question mark was singing the national anthem, like, I mean, I'm like, wow. I have to say, whoever thought of this idea of question mark, hands down. He would. I'm just saying, like, the reason why the question mark is so over, well, for me, is that you could get, you could do any type of silly gimmick as long as they show technical wrestling prowess. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be over with the crowd just like that. At least with me. I don't know about you, but yeah. And not to mention, we're still trying to find out who he is. So, yeah, there's the mystery. There's like, he's not just, I, uh, I can go on about weak ass gimmicks, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> so during the national, the Mongolian national anthem, mm -hmm. Trevor Murdoch actually comes out and kind of disrespects the anthem. And right when the middle of the, when the match started, uh, they gave him the flag to another guy in a mass question mark. Uh, I'm assuming he's a Mongolian citizen. <laughs> so he just carried the flag right outside the ring. Throughout the entire match, that was happening. But Trevor Murdoch decided to grab it and disrespect the flag. And you know how people are when you disrespect a uh, nation's flag. You tend to, to piss them off. Mm. But because of that, Aaron Stevens shows up while the ref had his back turned and ran some interference. Uh -huh. Basically, he's calling question mark sensei mark. Ooh, okay. <laughs> so, so, you're saying that... Um, that he's going to be underneath the question mark? Well, the way they're putting it, question mark is his master. That's but great. He's, he's teaching the ways. Teach him the way of karate. Yes. <laughs> but as Aaron Stevens, he's trying to put himself over, as always. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And <laughs> this is, uh, for me, I guess this is a good way to put him. To get him over, to go with yeah. everyone cheers with the question mark already. Yeah, of course. <laughs> and of course, the end of the match, question mark wins as always. Yes. Then we had an, a recap with the uh, Rock and Roll Express. Ah. You know, we all know who they are. They're awesome nine time and the world tag team champions. Mm -hmm. So they had their match against the wild card. But here's the interesting part that they had from both yes. sides. The Rock and Roll Express had Outlaw Inc., uh, Homicide and Kingston as their insurance policy ah. in case of any funny business out of the wild cards. There's a lot of insurance policies going around this Yeah, place. and not only that, the wild card had the same thing too, but this mm -hmm. time with the Dawsons. Mm -hmm. So both both sides had their own insurance policy. So I don't think the I think the insurance policy worked on both sides, but I don't think it was enough. Oof. The Rock and Roll Express continued to win. In this match so it was like first it was like the Dawson's knew they had to get rid of the outlying to do what the wild card asked them to do mm. but it didn't work out as they hoped but that's uh, that's the loss that's their loss right there and then we all after that they announced a brand new pay-per-view that go, that's going to be out on January 24th the hard times yep so basically they are announced that it's going to be also on Fight TV uh, they haven't yet, uh, how do I said Fight TV, if you guys actually have Fight TV, they haven't said, like, um, how much you have to pay yet. Right. I think they're still working on that as, like, as they go. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But, yeah. But they also announced, and you know this, the return of the NWA Television Championship. Mm hmm You know, because we already have the World Championship, the Women's Championship, the Tag Team Championship, and the National. So that's four. But now there's going to be a fifth. 
So we'll get to that later as soon as we finish with the it, results of the Into the Fire. Then uh, we had an interview with Eli Drake, like his post-match. Ah. So he was giving out what he was going to say, but out of nowhere, Mr. Anderson assaulted him from behind. Mm. Attacked him, beat him up. But After he already lost? Yeah. Weak. But he does the most in, the most cynical thing. He just puts the chair on him and just shoves him right through the turnbuckle. Like, it was like a modified version of what evil does. Mm-hmm. I like that. I like that. So, mm-hmm. kind of like he was injured and they try to stop, they managed to stop him from hurting Eli Drake even further. Then uh, we go to that tag team match where initially it was supposed to be Allison K and Alex Lee Vox versus Melina and Marty Bell. Mm-hmm. Now, as you recall, uh, Ashley Vox got in the face of Thunder Rosa, and the result, she broke her arm. Or should I say, Thunder Rosa broke her arm. So we didn't know what was going to happen. Was mm. this going to be a handicap match? It turned out it didn't. It turns out she had backup. She brought in ODB. Oh, yeah, that's right. I did see that. So basically, she stepped up on this mm. one, and it was like, I think Melina was not, was a bit of shock that somehow she had like a backup plan or something, I'm not sure. And Marty Bell was mostly getting much of the beatdown on this one. Mm. But sadly, uh, Allison K and uh, ODB took the victory on this one. I don't know. Where, I don't know where Thunder Rosa was at. I, know, I was assuming that she was gonna show up and run interference as any any stable faction would do. Right. You know, but but we'll get. I think there'll be more of the battle between Allison K and Melina in the weeks to come. If you agree with that, then we had the trip. Then we had um, the triple uh, triple threat match for the national heavyweight championship, oh. consistent of Colt Cabana, Nick no, uh, Aaron Stevens, and Ricky Starks. Now, if you all recall, uh, prior to that, Aaron Stevens was not too pleased at the fact that Colt Cabana gave Ricky Starks an exhibition match. Mm. And basically, that was like signs indication that Colt Cabana was about to give him an opportunity for the national uh, championship. And Aaron Stevens thought that was a lot. Of, it was pathetic of Colt Cabana to do that. Colt Cabana has like this philosophy what wrestlers should look like and how they should be. Right. He doesn't look doesn't picture Aaron Stevens as he's a wrestler. He's an actor. He's a joke to the wrestling industry, and that's why he looks at Ricky Stark saying he. He's brilliant. He's good. He's athletic. He has a promise to be a champion one day. That's what he sees in him. He doesn't look at Stevens. But somehow Stevens weaseled his way to get into this championship matchup. As, But do you think he was doing the work? Uh, which one? Aaron Stevens? Yeah. Uh, nah. I'd say he just YouTubed the work. <laughs> Actually, he was hiding. He was hiding. Was... He was letting both Cole Cabana and Ricky Starks beat each other up. But, of course, as always, Question Mark shows up and spikes uh, Coca Bat, and that's how he took the victory on this one. Mm. So he weaseled his way in to to win this match, but it's not over between Coca Bata and Aaron Stevens. That's for sure. Then uh, we get into the main event between Nick Aldis and James Storm. And, of course, before that, we see Tim Storm, the former champion, mm. in his referee getup. Now, let's go on to what the rules was happening. It was a two out of three falls. Each contender, the champion and challenger, picked the referee. Uh, James Storm picked Brian Hefner uh, mm. to be his referee in the first fall. Second fall, Nick Aldis picked Tim Storm. Now, whoever, now, if they result in going into a third fall... There's going to be a coin toss. Whoever wins the coin toss, it could be either uh, Brian Hepner or Tim Storm, will be refereeing that third fall. So, in the first uh, fall, everything was going great. Like, in, um, how to say, in Nick all this, uh, how to say, momentum, you know? Like, trying to control the match. But he did state it that Camille was given the night off. Right. But in result. Camille showed up and ran interference, costing him the first round. So, basically, the first round was given to James Storm. Then we go to the second 
fall where Tim Storm took over. Mm. Now, this one was pretty much a, another clean match, you know. No funny business from James Storm. But Nick Aldis did had the control of the match. And he took the fall on this one. So it was one-on-one. -on -one. Now, as I said, whoever, if we go to the third fall, there's going to be a uh, coin toss. And frankly, Brian Hebner won this one. Ah. So third fall was going around. Everything was going great. Like, uh, looks to me that Nick Aldis was in control. But Nick Aldis accidentally uh, clotheslined Brian Hebner. Oh. So basically, he looked at Tim Storm. Basically, he, he looks at him, you have no other choice. I mean, he's out, you know. And out of nowhere, um, some point during the match, um, when it looks like things were uh, get, uh, was in a loss for Nick Aldis, he removed the top safety of the turnbuckle. Mm. And he exposed it. He, like, um, what was it? James Storm kind of rolled him up, you know, like trying to get him down. But somehow Nick Aldis was able to push him towards the exposed turnbuckle and knocked him out. Uh, now, this is the part that gets more of the controversial. The, I'm not saying this like resembles to the Montreal screw job, yeah. but it's not. What happened is James Storm was already knocked out. And as Tim Storm as the referee, he has to make sh check on Tim Storm if he's okay. Because if he's not, because if you called when they do this, yeah. that means you're done. So when he did that, the check on James Storm, he was already out. Mm. And I think people just were not like there was like people like not happy how it turned out to be. There was controversy involved. Yeah, so that's what happened. And of course, Tim Storm was like doesn't know what to think of this. Like, what just happened? You know. So I think he was a bit of confused. Now after this main event, he was going out. Nick Aldis was saying that he is the true champion, and that no one on earth is going to be able to take the title from him. But lights turned off, and what just happened for the shock the wrestling world? Hmm. The appearance of the villain, Marty Skrull. That set headlines everywhere throughout nice. the social media, throughout the wrestling news outlets, everywhere. With or without uh, theme, uh, interest theme song? With, the, with his interest theme song. Nice. You know, I mean, people are still talking about about that. Like, people are saying, wait a minute, what about him going to AEW? Mm. Um, me and Nick are going to have a discussion about that as soon as we're done with the episode. We want to explain the whole thing. Yeah. This, this is going to be part two for us to do. So, yeah, so that's what happened. Basically, Marty showed up, but the, he was about to explain why he was there. And he's like, why not? Yeah. You know, I'm... I don't know why, like, I feel like I'm the only one that wasn't shocked. Like, I was like, yes, that's where he should go, is to, to NWA. Yeah. yeah. Let him build his brand. Yeah. So, as, once the end, Into the Fire was done, we jump into NWA Power. Mm -hmm. So, basically, we're still dealing with the aftermath of what happened. Yes. So, of course, NWA Power also allowed the debut of Stu Bennett. Mm -hmm. Or should we say him being the elite, Marty's dad. Marty's dad. <laughs> <laughs> So, but yeah, so Aaron Steven shows up with no, telling the world after what, two, three weeks, he's now a third degree black belt. Already? Yes. That's great. How do you, I mean, in real life, how do you get, you don't get a, a third degree black belt in two weeks. No. It takes time. Yes. And then he also announced that he's now third degree national champion. Oh. He put the stripes on the belt. But, of course, Cole Cabana comes out and confronts him, saying that there is no such thing as third degree. You know, it's because Cole Cabana is more of the traditional type of wrestler. He always viewed that Aaron Stevens is a joke. Mm. But, like I said, this is, not, this is far from over between Cole Cabana and Aaron Stevens. Then uh, we had Thunder Rosa Molina try to show up, give a little, how do I say, appearances. Mm-hmm. But out of nowhere, again, Ashley Voss decided to get some payback mm. against Thunder Rosa. Now, as you recall, Thunder Rosa broke her arm into the fire that cost her to not to be part of the match with uh, Allison K. So what was happening is Melina was about to break her arm even further. Ooh. 
But uh, Alex and Kate OBD managed to save the day and leave, uh, have uh, Melina and Donna Rosa run to the hills. And uh, of course, they just, this is interesting. Um, they jump in with uh, the recap what happened with Eli Drake. I mean, we all know what happened. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Anderson attacked them and kind of put the chair on him and pff, hit him right there. Then we go backstage where Melina and Thunder Rosa were looking for Marty Bell, like wondering why she was not there. But of course, they told you uh, she heard a different side. Like, I thought you didn't want me there. Right. But they told her to expe- do a- do exactly what not to do. You know, like don't listen to what she has to say. But this is interesting. This is what happened in Twitter. I don't know if you saw this. Mm. People were questioning Marty Bell. Were you texting the entire time while Melina and Thunder Rosa were being uh, were doing this? Like, no, I was looking for a gift for Melina for Christmas. Huh. <laughs> yeah, I think they're trying to fit in with the story. Very interesting. Yeah, so I'm like, well, it makes perfect sense. <laughs> and then we jump in with the tournament for the national, no, wait, for the television championship. As we all know, Into the Fire announced this. Yes. So they set up some interesting rules. Hmm. And here are the rules. Every match has the time limit of six minutes and five seconds. Yeah, I know. But do you notice something odd about the, the number? It was 6.05 is the time that it was on uh, TBS back in the day. Yeah, but also in the East Coast time. Yes. So it's kind of, I don't know if it's ironic or symbolic or whatever you want to yeah. call it. But <laughs> I, like to, I like to see if they were able to finish that. Mm. So th- they have that, but here's the thing: if they're unable to com- to finish around that time, both competitors are eliminated. No, oh. I mean this is unheard of. I mean we have seen elimination tournaments before, mm-hmm. you know, here and in Japan. I don't know how it works in the other countries to do it. And then uh, they said that once you like always, once you lose a match, you're out of the tournament. Okay. That's, so they're still doing that type of thing. Yeah. And of course, the winner will be crowned new NWA television champion. Now, they started out with a qualifying match, like the last participant to be in it. So it was a three-way match. They had Ziki Dice, Zhao Mina- uh, Rinaro, and C.W. Anderson. Mm-hmm. Now, these are wrestlers I don't know. Well, it's Sal, I've seen him in the early, in the first episode, the right. tag team match. So I'm like... I'm, I wasn't too sold much about it, but I was interested who was going to win this one. Makes sense. You know, like, okay, who is the last person to join in this tournament? Mm. And the, the winner for this match was Zicky Dice. Hmm. So Zicky Dice won this match, and he's like saying, you said, well, uh, well done. Well, I said, it's good job, you know, that type of thing. That's right. You know, basically, he may have won, but... He forget that there's more than one person involved in this tournament. Uh, where where are we in the tournament? We just barely started it. Well, they just announced the participant, but I'll okay. get to that in a bit. And then, as we all talked about the conspiracy theories, mm-hmm. you know, regarding of what James Storm has been talking about for weeks, it appears the Dawsons are starting to agree with him. Mm. Starting to agree what James Storm has been talking all along. There's a conspiracy with this whole thing. Apparently, after the result of what happened with them being the insurance policy for the wild card, they haven't been paid for for that particular event hmm. by the wild card, and they refuse to answer any phone calls or texts. So they're starting to suspect something is wrong here. Hmm. You know what I mean? And then, of course, wild card comes out. They give them a beatdown, like just to shut them up about the whole thing. But of course, Dawson's just took off hmm. you know like you know you want the truth to come out but people are do everything in their power to shut and not to let the truth come out that type of thing makes sense and then we had that little recap of marty scroll appearing at, into the fire at the end of the main event mm-hmm. i mean it's still buzzing the whole world about that you know and then uh we see eddie kingston going on the commentary but he did give an update after what happened into the fire that homicide uh, had to go to the hospital because the Dawson's took him out mm. with the chair. Then we had a, uh, how do I say, a non-title match with the Rock and Roll Express against two jobbers. Uh, their names is Zach Mosley and Sean Sims. 
And of course, as we know, seeing in, in squash matches, the Rock and Roll Express won this one. Nice. So, at, but they gave them a post-match interview right there. Like they're saying, you know, that we are one of the greatest tag teams. You know, he referred teams that been with them, you know, around their time when NW was well known and popular at the time, like Tully Blanchard and Arn Anderson. Um, I'm trying to remember who else was in it. But yeah. Midnight Express. Oh, yeah. Midnight Express, those guys too. So they put themselves in the same category as one of the those guys that, you know, were one of the greatest tag teams during the NWA's history. Mm -hmm. But they did ask the question about Nick Aldis that, that some people are starting to question. Nick Aldis wants to be one of the greatest in the same category as Holly Race, Ric Flair, Ricky Steamboat, you know, so on and so on. But uh, Rock and Roll Express did say that there is no doubt that he is a champ, but he has a long way to go. Mm. You know, to be in that category with those great wrestlers that we already know who've been world champions. So there's that. Um, then the conspiracy theories continue more. As they try to expose more to the truth, the wild card shows up and they get into a brawl. So NW officials had no other choice but to put them in the match between the Dawsons and the wild card. But there's still questions that people are asking, like, what is it that they're, they are hiding, you know? It, like, some people say it's not a big deal that, oh, just because they should realize, oh, Dawson's failed to, to allow the wild card win. You know, but why they have been radio silent the entire time. Hmm. That was one of those things that been it's been spread. And frankly, out of nowhere, Josephus Santa shows up. Yeah, Josephus. <laughs> Story is he was supposed to be suspended. Hmm. But during that time, uh, the wild card took the match on this one. And Josephus was still throwing some gifts and holiday cheers. I mean, frankly, I would prefer Cole Cabana dress as Santa. You know, I'm, that's me saying. Now we go to the who are the participants of the Nash, the NWA Television Championship Tournament. Mm. Now, as I said, Zicky Dice is one of them. So here they are: Ricky Starks, Caleb Conley, Boom Boom Colt Cabana, Trevor Murdoch, Tom Blackmere. The question mark. Eddie Kingston, Tim Storm, Storm, both the Dawsons, and the NWA World Champion, Nick Aldis. So those are the participants. Those are the participants for the television title? Yeah. Any questions about these guys? Uh, no, it just sounds like, it sounds like they have a small, uh, NWA has a small roster if they're Well, you got to remember, they're, guys, they so. are those who are committed to the committed to NWA, like Cole Cabana, yeah. Mr. Anderson, Eli Drake, yeah. and the rest of the people that they bring in are just jobbers. Right. You know what I mean? Just, I don't see why they should have their, their top star talent be involved in a mid-card uh, belt. Well, I don't know either. It's like, I don't know if they're going with that same angle with New Japan, you know, mm. with double champion thing. No, that's like I, like I was saying before, is that it just, I feel like it exposes the fact that these, uh, these promotions don't have as many talent as they as, as we think they do like yeah well but to reiterate to continue on with this tournament uh, they brought in a former uh, television champion Nikita Koloff oh shit okay so basically as you all know if you guys know your NWA history mm -hmm. Nikita Koloff was himself an NWA television champion mm -hmm. so they brought him in because they already decided to start for next week to start out the first two matches. Mm. So they had to pull the names out of a little uh, thingy out of the, the hand. So mm -hmm. Nikita pulled off the, the, the first two participants in the first match. And here they are. For match one is Ricky Starks versus Eddie Kingston. Second match, Boom Boom Cole Cabana versus the question mark. Mm. Yeah, so those are the first two matches that will start the tournament next week. Now, I don't know how long this is going to go for because, I, like I said, there's a f more on the way for, for matches. They haven't continued on with, uh, okay, 
who's gonna go where, you know what I mean? That makes sense. So, but yeah, and then uh, we jump in with the interview by Stu Bennett interviewing his son, <laughs> Marty Skrull. So, of course, he gave his explanation about that he's been hearing people saying where he was gonna go. Right. You know? But he said that he's Marty Skrull, he can do whatever he wants. I mean, I agree with him. I mean, no one needs to tell him what to do. But we just gotta wait and see. And of course, he he looks like he still has unresolved business for the title. Oh, yeah. Don't you think? Because he's that guy who is hungry to be at the top. Right. You know, we've been we already saw that with him on what two occasions. And then uh, we jump in with um, Tim Storm being there. You know, he gave his com was doing commentary, but um, one of the the um, the commentators gave, decided to prick his brain a little bit. Yeah. They asked him, what does he think about Marty Scroll being in the NWA? Mm -hmm. He did state that he's a talented wrestler, that he is one of those guys who works hard to get to the top. You know, uh, he said personally he would like to see a match between Marty Scroll and Nick Aldis. Right. You know, because he can see that Marty is, like, being serious about it. Despite the fact that some people say, ah, he's not world championship material. Uh -huh. But time and time we have seen him step up the plate. Yeah. You know, on that. No matter how, I mean, we all know him, he's a junior heavyweight, but he's he wants to make the jump. Let's not forget the only reason why, well, one of the other reasons why Tim Storm would like to see Marty as the world champion is so he can compete against uh, Marty to get the world champion. Because uh, as of right now, He's not allowed to compete anymore for the world champion as long as Nick Aldis holds it. Yeah. And then we see Eli Drake, who, he looks fine, but is his voice not fine? Hmm. Basically, he's like, ah, I'm okay. That type of thing. You know how when people lose their voice yeah. when you scream loud? So basically, they gave, decided to give him a little paint retribution against Mr. Anderson hmm. in a no disqualification match. I'm like, ugh, this is going to be interesting. But the strange thing is, like, any though disqualification match, he, he didn't use any weapons. That's kind of weird in my in my point of view, don't you think? Because mm. it, it's a no disqualification match. Basically, he could have gone away with it. Uh, uh, I think it's... I think it's uh, brilliant on his part for not using any weapons because, like, uh, you know, disqualification. I mean, he doesn't necessarily need to use weapons. It means he could just go out of the ring and, like, uh, no no disqualification. What does that exactly mean in NWA? Does it mean there's no time limit? There's no, because, uh, uh, like, no dis Well, there is a time yeah. limit, but uh, basically anything goes. Yeah. But, yeah. But Eli Drake took the victory on this one. Now, here's the part that gets the most shocking ending. Hmm. Nick Aldis comes out and confronts Tim Storm about his comments about what he said about Marty Skrull. Yeah. So basically, he was not too thrilled what he had to say. Hmm. As he said that as long as Nick Aldis is still the champion, uh, he can he cannot get uh, another title shot if Marty was able to beat him. Right. He can not get a title shot for this. So basically, they're about to throw down in the ring, but the wild card shows up and giving Tim Storm the beatdown. Right. And then all of a sudden, we were told prior that Camille was fired. Mm -hmm. And she confronts Nick all this, but all of a sudden, we see her speared Tim Storm. And then we see the one thing that we have seen was been told before. They asked Tom Latimer what was going on between mm -hmm. him and Camille. There are a couple. Yeah, I called that. Yeah. So basically, we start to ask the real question. Was there really a conspiracy theory throughout this entire time? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like James Storm may have been right all along that there was a conspiracy theory. But the real question is uh, how far they're going to go with this one. Mm. Because right now, I think the, there's still a lot of answered questions that they want to know. Like, was this plan out from the start or whatever, you know? Because we've seen people do this type of thing in any promotion. Oh, yeah. But we'll just got to wait and see what's going to happen next week on this one. 
So, but I'm excited for what uh, to follow the tournament for the television championship. Yeah. You know, because they did state that they're going to go with this and the first two matches start next week. I like the time limit thing, it being about six minutes. It's... Five seconds. Well, yeah, that's why I said about six minutes. So it being about six minutes, um, I like that it's it's long enough time for both decent competitors to tell their in ring story and all that good stuff. Mm-hmm. And doesn't does because not all matches have to be a, a sixty minute Broadway for it to be an uh, an excellent match. I mean, you could have really great short matches. I mean, try to keep things interesting for fans. Yeah, probably uh, probably you guys in the back are saying, wait a minute, is it enough time to for this? I'm like. You may never know. Yeah. You know, you may never know what they could surprise us with. I mean, me, I'm kind of curious how this is going to be played out because I could say this to myself over and over, and you can yeah. say that to yourself too. Six minutes and five seconds is not enough time to to be in a match. I mean, I mean, yes. No, it's enough but, time. But we just got to see if this is, like, the perfect way to showcase yourself. It's enough time for, like I said before, for... Two athletes that are really good at telling an in-ring story with a timely amount of time. Yeah. So, we'll continue more with NWA uh, when we get a chance. Uh, so, we'll continue on following the upcoming pay-per-view. What's it called? Hard Times? The Hard Times, baby. Nice title. <laughs> but they still haven't given out the card on that yet. But I can try to think of a few, but I'm not going to go there just yet until it's confirmed. I'm sure it'll be the bull of the wool, Daddy. Yeah. So we'll be right back with more. So stay tuned for more. Mm. You know I've been going a lot to the Level Up Showcase. Yeah. Now, this particular one that came out, Showcase Festivus, was something fresh I didn't think it was going to happen. As mm. you know or don't know, they don't have a title championship on this one. If mm. you recall from what Mike Camden said in our first interview, he did state that this was more of a experimental. Right. You know, where we get to see up and comers, you know, those who are in training to showcase characters developing, or if it doesn't work, then they'll try something new, that type of thing. Mm. So this one, they had um, a couple of surprises that they throw in. But one in particular I'm going to throw in is the um they have a sanctioned tag team match on this one they from the time they opened up this uh the level up they never had a a sanctioned championship match hmm. ever but i'm not gonna say it's weird i'm gonna say this was very interesting to watch you know what i mean because um if you guys want to know where these uh does where do these championships come from this one originates from um Millennium Pro Wrestling out of Chatsworth and in, um, in Los Angeles. Mm. It's a, one of the wrestling schools down there. They have an association with the Level Up guys. But I'll get to that. So here are the matches I did witness. Uh, we had the Infectious facing against my boy, Hunter Friedman. And funny thing is, right when Hunter Friedman comes out, he's having everyone, guys in hats. He comes up, he does this. Reason is, he does that because every time he's in a wrestling match, he's in a match re- re- wrestling with a hat. And then when Why? he's. Because that makes him look more redneck. Hmm. For some odd reason, but it's unique. But whenever he's wrestling with a hat, he does this. Like he just transforms to someone else. Like, kind of like Superman or something. But. Hmm. So, I was like. I was going to see what this infectious guy was going to do. What he does, he puts insa- his hand inside his pants. You know, try to put it in, in Hunter's mouth and all this. I'm like, oh. But sadly, you couldn't beat the Lucha Redneck or our resident California Redneck. So he took him out with the big boot and this crazy move. I don't know what he calls it, but I got to ask him for it. And the next match was a guy you and I talked before, uh, Chuck Mercer. Yeah. Uh, he was in a match against Eddie Islas. Now, I wasn't much sold on this match, but it was a good one. But the end of this match, it became very special. This was one of the surprises I told you about. Uh, the announcer 
asked Chuck Mercer was he gonna, if he made any plans on January 18th. He did say he was just going to drink some whiskey, look at girls, all this and that. And, of course, they informed them that he is debuting on January 18th for, our, for Ground Zero, San Diego's very own local promotion. And, of course, he was very emotional about it because uh, the Ground Zero is one of the hottest promotions here. In San Diego, aside to Fist Combat, for uh, so SoCal Pro, you know, but yeah, and I'm sure he was like very happy to hear that because he hasn't uh, actually wrestled there yet, and I think the only person who who makes the approval is B Boy, the guy mm -hmm. who runs it. And the next match was an interesting one. It, it has a uh, Jackson Calhoun, who we call him the Southern, uh, the Sweet Southern Heat. Now, before the match started, guess what he does? Hmm. He tells the referee to get lost. He gets sick and tired about thinking that the referee's not counting one, two, three fast or doesn't know how to count. So he insults him saying, you know something, fat boy? So he just tells Jimmy to, to take a hike, that he wants another referee. But, you know, they're all saying, just be careful what you wish for. Right. So he actually, the special guest referee was my boy Remy Morgan, you know. Now, he probably asked why they put a wrestler, well, uh, to get out the cape fade for a little bit. Uh, the other ref, uh, Chad Rico, who I talked to, uh, recently got injured, and he kind of hurt his hand. So he was unable to ref, so I think uh, they needed another referee, or they just need a special referee for the, for the night, because this event was already... Set in motion. Dirty book. Yeah. So this was an interesting match where Remy Morgan shows up in a ref for a get up. I was like, he was still wearing his uh, his gear underneath, you know, his uh, shin guard things, all this. So his opponent was uh, Barbie Boy. Mm. I'm like thinking, oh my God, I wonder how this is going to go. Because Barbie Boy really made a good impression on the last showcase against Mike Camden. So, but he comes out uh, with the entrance theme song from uh, the Mariah Carey Christmas song. You probably heard that. Mm. Yeah, I thought it was so hilarious, but it was great. Um, but of course, as always, Jackson Calhoun is telling him to count right. And of course he is counting right. He's, he was told to do everything down by the middle. But Jackson Calhoun is not satisfied. But his mistake was getting in the face of Remy Morgan and, al and allowing Barbie Boy to take the victory. And, of course, Jackson Calhoun did not like it one two bit, so he he uh, attacked uh, Remy Morgan. But right after, after this assault, uh, B-Boy called out for Barbie Boy. Now, it was still unclear what was going on until they announced... That Barbie Boy is also going to debut at Ground Zero on January 18th. And he was emotional. And so, and then here comes Chuck Mercer to hug him because they're both from the from the same training place. Right. And who would have thought that these two guys from another training facility will be coming down here to San Diego to wrestle for Ground Zero? And I would like to see this, you know, since if they're going to debut, I would love to see those two in, over there. I'm just looking for a way to. If any, anybody wants to come with me. And then we had an interesting match uh, after that. We had uh, Mike Camden facing against uh, one half of the One Night in Vegas, uh, Frankie Frank. Now, if you guys don't know, Mike Camden is undefeated. He hasn't lost a match at the showcase since they first opened up. But uh, this is no longer the case anymore. So the match was great. I love what Frankie Frank was throwing, you know. He has this tendency where he has his opponents slap themselves. Yeah. And he had uh, Camden slap himself four times. I'm like, oh, that's a record. But the biggest shocker was at the end of the match. Frankie Frank is the first to pin by Camden. Mm. I, every, it was like dead silent for for a bit, you know, like, like people were like, what the hell just happened? And 
the whole point of his undefeated streak was to put him over. Yeah. So, like, they're going to be pay attention to, uh, what was the other guy? Frankie Frank. Frankie Frank. The, I'd, I'd pay close attention to his, uh, his push if they're going to give him the opportunity to end a, a streak like that. Yeah, it was like... So I I don't I think uh, there was a uh, one of my friends who I go at the showcase yeah. who's also there said maybe it was time to end the streak yeah. you know I'm like yeah I mean it would make sense I mean we have seen that with guys like Bill Goldberg and Oscar you know mm-hmm. they had like great streaks oh, so wow. but uh, for Oscar that's like a bit of people we talk about a lot you know Oscar they they yeah they screwed that they one up. screwed that one up and. But I feel like th- this way with Camden was more appropriate, you know? And Kevin Nash ending a Goldberg streak, that was more to put himself <laughs> over because he booked yeah. the goddamn thing. <laughs> yeah, so then we had to jump into the main event where we had for the MPW Tag Team champion, uh, Championships. Mm-hmm. We had um, the, cur- the, the champions, the Midnight Snacks, these huge guys. That's great. <laughs> yeah. They were the ones t- uh, holding the titles, but their op- their challengers were three teams. Mm. Uh, uh, Level Up's very own 8-Bit Lid, J2 and Hops, v- uh, versus Hyde and RJ Santos out of uh, Santino's brothers. And then we have SoCal's pro's very own uh, Jordan Cruz and Tanner. Mm. Now, this was an interesting four-way match, you know, because... Like I said, this was a sanctioned match. And I was like, wasn't sure. I was like thinking, okay, I can vote either Hyde and RJ or 8-Bit Lid and, or, the, <laughs> or the Midnight Snacks. But there was some great moments in this match. Uh, there was one where the Midnight Snacks were about to crush RJ Santos, like, like pancake. Mm. What happened is RJ moved out of the way. But the bad part is they hit themselves and then they're like, no, 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 don't jump, don't throw yourselves, don't throw yourselves in the, in the floor mat. And then they do and they all pounced like, like an earthquake just hit. Mm. I thought it was funny. But frankly, the Midnight Snacks took the victory. I mean, come on, these two huge dudes took the match. But I will set up links of all five matches down below on the subscription. So if you guys want to see the full matches, they're they're really awesome to watch. This one is called the Showcase Fe- uh, Festivus, in case if you're interested to watch. So like I said, if you guys want to check out these shows, you can go to Level Up. Um, I'll try to set up the the address where it is, and the admission is only $5. So they haven't announced when it's the next showcase yet, if you're interested, but I would follow up on social media, either Facebook or Instagram. Uh, Instagram or Twitter, however you want to go with. But uh, before we go, I'm going to throw in a little highlight clips for all of you, and then we'll continue on with the show. So we'll be right back. Oh, 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 
All right. Today we got MLW. Mm. Now, Nico, you have been aware they have been going with the Opera Cup tournament. Yes. So uh, this tournament hasn't been active for a long time. Have you oh. guys been aware? Mm. When's the last time they've had it? 1940s. Sure. The last uh, cup holder was the legendary Stu Hart. Mm. If you guys know who he is, he is the father of Bret Hart, uh, Owen Hart. If you don't know this, can you really call yourself a wrestling fan? Yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to say that. Yeah, for you. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, it started out, as always, injustice being disrupted again, going out with that whole mm -hmm. thing. They're being treated unfair, as always. But, of course... There's a match that had to be gone. Mm -hmm. And King Mo shows up because he felt that, how do I say, injustice are disrupting. Yeah. This is his match he's supposed to be in. So they're like, we're not going nowhere. But out of nowhere, we get the surprising return of ACH. Yeah. So if you guys recall, ACH has now, was, uh, well, he said he quit yeah. WWE. But we're hearing from W saying that he was released. Yeah. So I can't say who's right on this matter because it's that old he said, she said type of crap yeah. that we don't want to hear. You know, so we'll just leave it as that. But of course, the interesting part, right, when ACH come out, Injustice were trying to offer them a position to go with them. That's You know what? That's what I was saying. That sh they should have done some, some stuff like that. Like, it would make sense to, like, the, you know, take the... Take the reality with the fiction and marry them in the two and make them, I don't know, the new leader of Injustice. Because Jordan Oliver, is, to me, is better than that gimmick. <laughs> like, I've seen him wrestle without that gimmick, and that, he is pretty nice. That fist combat, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, but ACH decided to stand by King Mo. Ah. So, it turned out to be a tag <laughs> match between Injustice members Cotto Brazil and Jordan Oliver versus right. King Mo and ACH. Now, we all know how ACH is very athletic, mm -hmm. you know, skilled and of what he can do. We all know King Mo, he's an MMA fighter, you mm -hmm. know. This is his second match so far that I'm aware of that he ends up. So, of course, the victory will go to King Mo and ACH. So, but we still don't know much because uh, this is pre-taped, as you all may have heard. And I already talked to Nico. Yeah. ACH already said he was quitting pro wrestling. Damn. Yeah. But um, MLW are not, how to say, mad with him. They're pretty much supportive of him because they understand what he was going through with his previous employer, if you all know who it is. So we're not going to get too much into that. Then we had a dynasty segment. Basically, if you guys don't know this, MJF is Jewish, I think. I'm not sure, but he was he going... Has, yeah, Friedman, yeah, he's Jewish. He's Jewish, so he yeah. goes, what you get me for Christmas slash Hanukkah. Mm -hmm. So basically, he's he... still hiding his face? No. He's <laughs> no longer hiding his face. I, I don't know what was the whole thing. Maybe he was... Uh, the reason probably he was absent was because of his other commitment with AEW. Mm -hmm. So we're not going to get too much into that detail because we don't know much mm -hmm. yet. If we did, we'll probably put that in a separate discussion. So what happened is MJ shows up with those air, like a gigantic AirPods that Richard Holloway, Holiday actually wears. You, you've seen those, right? Mm -hmm. So he got get them these big ones. Like they are not attachable yet. But Richard Holiday kind of screwed up. Mm -hmm. He was so touched what MJF did for him. But his little present for him was not for him. Uh -huh. Basically, he got him a little mini MJF. Interesting. <laughs> but of course, MJF was like, what the hell? <laughs> I think he was expecting something else, you know, like maybe a nicer scarf or a cane or whatever. But he was expecting something, but not a little mini MJF. <laughs> he was going ballistic about it. I'm like, oh man, Richard, you really screwed up on this one. So, and then we, I don't know if you heard this now with uh, jumping out of the segment. Uh, 
MLW just signed a new wrestler. This guy was coming from Reality of Wrestling, Booker T's promotion. Oh, okay. His name uh, is Gino Medina. Mm. So basically, there's been word now that Gino Medina has found an interest in joining MLW. Hmm. But the cameras caught him talking to Conan. Now, if you all know Conan, he has been one of those uh, straight-up successful managers over the years. You know, pro uh, probably before that, he was a successful wrestler from mm -hmm. Lucha Libre, even WCW. Not just that, but bringing the Lucha Libre oh, yeah. to, uh, the, to uh, WCW. Yeah, that too. WCW. That too. Now we go into the first match of the Opera Cup tournament. Mm -hmm. The first match was uh, Timothy Thatcher versus Richard Holiday. Ah. So this was one of the first matches for this cup. Now, we already had like four brackets going on, and this is the first one. Hmm. So so basically, I was like interesting to see who was going to win this one because, as you know, Richard Holiday is a member of Dynasty, and those guys would do whatever it takes to win. Right. And you got Timothy Thatcher, who is an MMA fighter himself. Mm -hmm. So I'm like thinking, okay, there has to be a winner for this one. Uh, but of course, the I don't think Dynasty shows up, shows up because they, I don't know if they're back in their minds that they, they don't want to get in the face of an MMA fighter, right? You know, because you know how those guys get. You know, if you guys, <laughs> if you guys know what I'm talking about, talk to someone who is an MMA fighter. Well, get your knee broken, <laughs> or your arm broken, mm -hmm. or maybe your face broken. Either way, something's broken. Yeah, <laughs> but the surprising is Timothy Thatcher took the victory. Mm -hmm. So that makes him advance into the tournament. And then we see Selena Lorenza finally returned after she got speared by L.A. Park accidentally. You know, not intentionally. Right. But of course, um, as you know, she has a bit of a rivalry with Conan. Mm. You know, Selena Lorenza is going out saying she's bringing all these Lucha Libre wrestlers out here to the States. But in reality, it was Conan who brought them here. You know, like like I said, another he said, she said type of storyline. So, and she decided to talk to Reg uh, Gino Medina. Basically tried to snatch him away. So, whatever Conan has in his pocket, she'll try to steal it. Or Conan ha takes whatever Selena Dillard has in her pocket. So, interesting story. Then, uh, Mance Warner has this, another message for... Jimmy Havoc. So basically, the rivalry between those two are not, it's not over yet. This is great. I, this is, for me, pretty exciting. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, you, you, you like seeing this rivalry between yes. Warner and, uh, and Havoc. Well, I don't know what, what's going to be good. The one, either when they were going all over Orlando, chasing them to the apartment or, mm -hmm. or whatever they have in store. I don't know. I'm like saying, okay, they got to be topping something better than this. Yeah. Then we see the Von Erichs, Ross and Marshall talking to the general, mm. uh, Kevin. Basically, they're still in, how to say, try to understand what got into the head of Tom Lawler when right. he stabbed them in the back. But Kevin kind of made a good point. It's always about the money for these guys. I mean, there's no surprise in that. But, it, but Kevin did state that Tom Lawler did them a favor, mm. saying that, that this is their time for them to shine away from Tom Lawler. Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, this guy may have brought them into MLW, but in reality, was this was going to last forever? No. No. So basically, as two brothers as these guys, they always take daddy's advice, as always. Then uh, another message this time from Contra Unit, you know, but this time they kind of gave out a little piece of information that Hikaru Kwan was in Japan. Mm. Now, my assumption on that, I'm thinking he's trying to recruit more people. Mm. I mean, the thing is this. I know that MLW has an alliance with New Japan. No, no. Pro Wrestling Noah. Mm. My mistake, Pro Wrestling Noah. So I'm like thinking, okay, if he's going to recruit any guys from those guys, that's going to be interesting. But I just don't know who. But we'll just wait and see for that. But the best news I just hear after that, uh, you may have heard them, the Stronghearts. Mm. If you guys know who they are, yeah. uh, if you guys follow AEW, the Stronghearts made their appearance at Double or Nothing. And now 
Shima, Linderman, and T-Hawk announced that they're coming to MLW. Ooh. So this is an interesting thing to see. I mean, we only seen these guys either with OWE or AEW. Mm-hmm. You know, but now we're going to see them making appearances in MLW. This is an interesting move for these guys. They're pretty much the only ones that we've seen from OWE. Yeah, well, it's because you got to remember with OWE, they're still trying to find a way to get visas right. for the Chinese wrestlers to mm-hmm. come down to the States. Because if you all, we don't like to get political here. Mm-hmm. Uh, of course, we have uh, the U.S. has more of a, how do I say, not tr- more of a concern issues with China. Uh, so basically, we like I said, we don't get political, but we do understand the situation they see. Right. You know, but hopefully we can see those guys like yeah. the, the the natives because we only seen OVE go to to Japan or London, uh, but it's the U.S. part that makes it more complicated. So then we had our main event for also part of the Opera Cup tournament: Brian Mitt Pillman Jr. versus TJP. Or better known as T.J. Perkins. So basically, I wasn't too much sure who was going to win this one. Because uh, we know who T.J.P. is. Yeah. You know, he's been every promotion that we can think of. You know, recently he was with WWE. And he's currently still working with Impact Wrestling. Mm-hmm. And Brian Pilminger, we all know who he is. And who he was in the, uh, the, the, tag, the junior tag league. Oh, yeah. Wasn't he also in the um, Super J Cup? Yes. Yeah. I'm not sure if he was part of the British J Cup. Nah. No. But we'll figure out. I'll, I'll find out when we get there. But, man, that was a good match. Too. I mean, Brian Pillman, he was more like the brawler type. Mm-hmm. You know, from what I can tell. And we know TJP is an amazing high flyer. You know, very athletic. But the victory goes to Brian Pillman Jr. Yes. I mean, I mean, we've seen Brian Pillman Jr. like lose once in a while, but he had to build up more momentum, you know, if he wants to succeed in the wrestling business. Yeah. So, so that's what happened in the Opera Cup tournament. So basically, we have two matches, and I'm sure, I'm assuming, next week there'll be the other two matches right. involving in this tournament. Um, I don't remember. I know that one is consistent with uh, Dynasty's very own uh, Hammerstone. Versus MJF. Now, I'm interested to see how this goes. Because there is no way either one man is going to back down. One's going to say, know. lie down on the ground. And one's gonna, or that. There has to be a winner. I love it. That's one of my favorite things about uh, New Japan. Is that uh, I like seeing interfactions in um, interfaction ma- matches in uh, tournament settings. Because... Uh, you get to see, you get to see you get to see them display like all their different uh, stuff that you don't normally get to see, and they're displaying them with people that they're very very comfortable with. So like, you, I feel like you get the most out of them out of that. Yeah, with, uh, something like that. Yeah. So that's what happened for this episode of MLW Fusion. Now, mm-hmm. the greatest news that happened is what the MLW announced: the debut of Killer Cross. Uh. So, if you guys may or may have not been following, last July, uh, Killer Cross requested his release from Impact Wrestling. Now, they completely denied the request. Now, for months, we've been, fans have been asking to let him go. Hmm. You know, we just, I just don't know why they haven't released him until now. You know, it, it was still... I think it's still a mystery for all of us, for us fans, mm. you know. But the the biggest question was right after he was released, where was he gonna go? I mean, you and I can agree he could have gone either with AEW, but there are no saying he could go with WWE. Others say Ring of Honor, others say New Japan or MLW. But finally, it's been announced he's gonna make a debut to MLW in Philly on February 1st of 2020. Now, I'm excited to see this because if you guys don't know, Killer Cross is a unique, um, how to say, character. If you guys ever seen him in, um, in Impact Wrestling, 
he has like this kind of uh, how to say built. How can I say it? Like a feature of psychotic, the uh, like, kind of like a killer type serial killer. You know what I mean, mm. have you ever seen him in um, in Lucha Underground? He played the this character called himself the White Rabbit, mm. and he actually had to force this guy uh, Paul London to kill his fellow companions or kill Bascarita Sagrada. So he has that tendency to be the serial killer type. I mean, he has this thing in Vegas, a, a more of a show called Natural Born Killers. Oh. So, but he did state this to uh, Chris Van Bleet uh, t not too long ago, that there is no way WWE is going to allow that particular character type be in WWE. You know, I mean, would you agree with that? Yeah. Because there are some promotions that can't allow him to be that way. You know, AW, for example, could be one of them. Mm -hmm. But we'll just got to see how this is going to be played out with MLW. Because um, I don't know how lenient they are, you know, but if they are allowing him to be that type of person, then I'm okay with it. How about you? I think, uh, I think, it, was, I think it was a better choice to go to MLW first. Um, being it like a, like a fusion type brand, um, they're more accepting to like his his style of uh, of uh, wrestling, not just uh, in in ring, but the character that that he's bringing to the table. Mm -hmm. So, but we all know that his girlfriend uh, Scarlett Bardot is currently with yeah, NXT. She's, uh, she's yet to appear on TV, but I know she's been participating in some live shows. You know, but because people are saying he got to be with NXT because his girlfriend's are like, yeah, but. Yeah, that's like saying Britt Baker and Marty Scurll have to be in NXT, too, because of... Yeah, I mean, look, yeah. Britt Baker, we know her boyfriend's NXT. Yeah. We know uh, Marty Scurll's girlfriend's NXT. Yeah. But, to be honest with you, like, we now have uh, people who are have either married couples or or partners are set, uh, working in separate yeah. companies. Look at um, how to... Look, uh, Britt Baker is currently with AEW. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, John Moxley is with AEW, but his wife continues to work with WWE. That's right. Then we got J Sean Spears, who's with AEW, and his wife is in WWE. You know, I mean, those type of things can work too. And, uh, John Morrison just went to. Oh yeah, that too, and Taya is still with Impact. Still with Impact yeah. So, I mean, just because oh they're in this, they got to be in the same working environment doesn't mean that it's the proper way. We have seen recently. Uh, either married couples or unmarried couples mm. that they can be uh, be together even if they're in separate promotions you know because we're, we're seeing a lot of that of, re of this year recently you know with Moxley and Spears now going with with uh, AEW and same thing with Britt Baker and you got something interesting like Will and uh, Bia where they're oh, yeah, kind of too. where they're kind of in the same company but not well Bia is with stardom yeah. and and Wills with New Japan, but um, uh, we're yet to see that yet. Until we get to that uh, mm. that bridge, we'll just we'll report that as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. So that is what we got for MLW. But I can't wait to see what's going to happen with the continuation of the Opera Cup tournament. Mm. But like I said, my the one match I'm excited to see is Alex Hammerstone versus MJF. Yeah. So that's something we got to uh, pay attention. Watch out for that one. Yeah. So. So we'll continue on with the episode, so we'll be right back. All right, so we just saw Impact. Well, I saw Impact. Mm. You know, um, there has been some good episodes on of recently and some good matches that I've been following. Yeah. I mean, last week, I cannot believe they had a little wrestling court. I mean, something different. You know, wrestlers court, but hopefully they do it again. <laughs> it's kind of just had wrestling court before. Well, that was little people's court with WWE. Yeah. That was different because <laughs> he got a midget. Court. Yeah, <laughs> but the first match they started out was uh, Jordan Grace versus Tennille Dashwood. Now, as you all know, you probably ask if you guys watch it back. Where was Tennille Dashwood the entire time? Well, funny story. She likes to travel. Mm -hmm. She's a bit of a traveler person. I mean. I seen photos of her, you know, traveling because the last uh, trip that she did one time was Indonesia, where she talked. She almost got bit by a monkey. 
So yeah, this match was interesting because uh, this was no match for for a number one contendership because Jordan Grace is going to be facing Teo Valk Valkyrie and ODB the, for the Impact Women's Championship that takes place at Hard to Kill. I think that's next month. But it was a good match. No, don't get me wrong. I mean, Jordan Grace, she's a powerhouse. Like, watching her. And Tennille Dashwood, well, she's building much of her in-ring work because and if you all recall back then she wasn't given enough how do i say time to develop her in-ring work you know but uh, of course the match goes to jordan grace and of course jordan grace extended her hand to, to neil dashwood like showing her respect that she did a good job that even though she didn't win this one she Throw in her very best in work that she could possibly throw at her. But out of nowhere, Tail Valkyrie was not going to take this too lightly. She could proceeds, still precedes Jordan Grace as a threat to the title. But she wasn't going to allow Tennille Dashwood to... How do I say this? Uh, get uh, Try to steal her thunder type of thing. So that's what happened. And then there's a little segment that they had with Moose and Rhino. Now, if you guys don't know, Moose has this thing where he does the spear, kind of like we've seen with Goldberg, uh, Roman Reigns. And Rhino does his own spear version, but he called it the gore. Moose has the tendency to open his mouth to tell how he's better. Does the spear. Oh, yeah, that too. So Moose has this tendency to say that his spear is way better than Rhino's, than the gore. But, like be, like people say, you should have kept your mouth shut. Rhino gored Moose. I mean, like they always say, that's what, that's what you get for talking shit. But it was so funny. And then they had a little segment, the, another segment in the back, where the tag team champions, the North, uh, Josh Alexander and Ethan Page, are a bit of concern over the fact that Rich Swan won the match a week ago for the number, number one contendership for the tag team titles. So they decided to stir things up between Willie Mack and Rich Swan. Like, uh, if you guys recall, I said a week ago, Rich Swan got injured. Like, real bad. But it's still unclear how bad is the injury because they're not scheduled to be in the match with the North until hard to kill. But... They're telling him where, where was Rich Swan when he when you need him that mm -hmm. type of thing. So they're they're trying to stir things up, like try to do that whole divide and conquer type of routine that we've seen in the ring on several occasions. Then he, with the the next match we had is TJP along uh, alongside uh, Fahal uh, Falaba versus uh, Daga. Now I'm a fan of Daga. You know I've been watching him for a long time. And my God, he is like almost in a similar style as TJP. You know, like he throws in the best uh, high flying moves too, just like TJP. But he calls his style uh, Lucha Libre strong, a strong style. Mm. I mean, he's not wrong. But TJP, as always, comes out of top and he shows his respect to, to Daga because. Come on, Daga is really athletic. I would like to see more of Daga, but doing more stuff with Impact. But out of nowhere, here comes the Desi Hit Squad, and attack everyone. Attack TJP, Faha Ball, but Daga tried to help. But out of nowhere, he was attacked from behind by another member of the of the Desi Hit Squad, who we assume was on a spiritual retreat. Shahira. So he just chokes on Daga. So basically, there's a war between the uh, the Desi Hit Squad against Fahaba for months. But uh, TJP came out to help them because they're close friends. And Daga decided to help because he wasn't going to let these guys get away with it. So that's how it ended. And then we got a little sub, another problem with Brian Cage. RVDs continues to rant out Brian Cage stole his moves. 
I, like I said, I don't recall Brian Cage can do moves that RVD th does. But this time it happens when Brian Cage was going to the bathroom. Here comes RVD out of the bathroom with his girlfriend, Katie Forbes. Making out, as always. So, I mean, we're not in doing some porno flick here. Which is be becoming on certain occasions. Like, if they were right here right now, they'd probably be making out right in front of us. That type of scenario. Then they had a flashback moment of the week. This one you're going to like. Mm. It was an old match between the Motor City, Motor City Machine Guns versus Generation Me. Hmm. In a ladder match for the tag team titles. I've seen that. That was an epic match. Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, th this is one of those matches that kind of put them on the map. You know, because back then the Bucks were known as Generation Me with mm -hmm. TNA. But since they're no longer with the company, they're just go by the Young Bucks. But yeah, you guys can see that match if you guys can find it. That this is one of those epic matches. Jeremy and Mad Buck. <laughs> That's what they call themselves, the guy if you guys are interested. And then we had a little interesting segment between Susie and the demon assassin Rosemary. Basically Susie is trying to remember everything. If you got recall if you guys recall, Jessica having killed Sue Young. And somehow she was brought back from the dead as Susie. Now, James Storm, uh, no, James Mitchell, I forgot that's his name. If you guys don't remember him, he was the manager for, for Abyss. He was actually trying to manipulate Susie to take her side. Because there's a war going on, well, civil war between the people from hell. <laughs> Yeah, that type of thing between Rosemary and James Mitchell. Now they're trying to have Su like Rosemary's trying to understand what it, what's going on with Susie. Like, why has she become why Su Young was brought back from the, from the dead and become Susie? But James Mitchell has no interest of knowing. He just wants to manipulate her, you know, to turn her on his side. But something went wrong apparently the more they were being violent the more something inside Susie comes out she does a little bad sheet scream if you guys ever wa watch DC uh, the DC shows the bad bad sheet kind of like throws out the screen and they just stop from there I'm like thinking oh is Sue Young coming back is the undead bride coming back I'm like I gotta see that and then we then they jump in with another segment, but this time, Madison Rain and Kara Hogan. Well, let's just say they're not friends with Teo Valkyrie after she's more about herself rather than be a team player. But Teo Valkyrie, as a desperate move, she asked for their help, regard of Jordan Grace and Tilio Dashwood. And you know how champions are like in Teo Valkyrie's stature; she will do whatever it takes to. Make sure she wins the match. Now, we had the interesting thing. As I talked before, the North would try to stir things up between Rich Swan and and Willie Mack since they're the number one contenders for the Impact Wrestling uh, tag team titles. Um, there was a one-on-one -on -one match between Ethan Page and Rich Swan. Now, as always, when there's a, a match like this for tag team groups, they always had their partners on, on the ringside. So... I don't know what was the if this was part of their plan to stir things up. There was a moment where Rich Swan was about to fly off the ring. Josh Alexander pushes Ethan Page out of the way and get himself uh, caught. I mean, talk about t uh, taking a bullet, that type of thing. But Ethan Page decided to antagonize Willie Mack, and that kind of put. Rich Swan, he disqualified him for getting in Ethan's page. But you you can see in the look in Ethan Page's face that, how do I say, this was part of the plan. Like, he was trying to stir things up. I think that was the whole point of the whole, of uh, trying to stir things up between them. Hmm. Then we go backstage. Uh, apparently, Moose was not happy that he got gored by Rhino. So, they go with another brawl in the back. So, it's starting to get more interesting to see these guys go on. 
Now, the next match was interesting, as I talked to you about a week ago. Joey Ryan was taken to wrestler's court, thanks to Johnny Swinger, who's been lying. He was sent. He was found guilty and sentenced to face Ace Romero. Now, Johnny Swinger decided to catch this match. I think he wanted to see how Joey Ryan is going to fall down, like, lose this match. And <laughs> as we know, Joey Ryan... He has a lollipop hidden in his trunks. And he pulls it out. He was trying to get that into the mouth of A.C. Romero. But, oops, referee gets it. And then, as uh, Joey was about to have his little dick flick moment on A.C. Romero, he got pushed out of the way by Johnny Swinger. And this is going to make you laugh. Johnny Swinger has a fanny pack. And he tried to do the same, the kind of the flip thing, but with the fanny pack. <laughs> he tried to get him to flip, and I think Ace is like, what the hell? And he just squeezes the the fanny pack, like, ah! Like he was, uh, like, it, like his fanny pack is his power or something, I don't know. But as, as soon as AC Romero gets him out of the way, um, Joey Ryan gets him on the dick flip. This time, he got it right. And then he gave him the little another lollipop that was still in his trunks, and puts it in his mouth and does this tr uh, swing ching music on it. And Joey took the victory on this one, and I'm assuming that this is not over between Joey Ryan and Johnny Swinger because Joey Ryan he's not a fan of Johnny Swinger whatsoever. And then we jump into an interview with Tessa Blanchard, where Sammy Callan has been saying this for a while that he wants to expose Tessa Blanchard for what she is. So, Tessa's not too worried, but, you know, Sammy he likes to stir things up, too. And we jump into the backstage area where Michael Elgin took Eddie Edwards' trophy from a tournament they had not too long ago. And then the next match was uh, Ace Austin versus uh, P. Williams. Now, Ace Austin is the current X Division champion, so this one was not a title match. So Ace Austin uh, was somehow was able to beat the veteran, uh, Petey Williams. But he does the one thing that many people call him the bastard for, or a prick. He said he dedicates this match to Miss Miguel, uh, Trey Miguel's mom. If you guys know who he is, he's a member of the Rascals. And one of the number one contenders for the X Division champion. Now, Trey confronts him about it and they get into a fight and he does not appreciate that Ace Austin is trying to get with his mom. Like, he knows that he's up to something because he tried to do the same thing with uh, Eddie Edwards' mom. Oh, no, Eddie Edwards' wife, Alicia. But, frankly, Alicia took care of him. <laughs> she set him up for a beatdown not too long ago. And then we finally go with... Hold on, let's put this up that little announcement about Sammy saying that he wants to expose Tessa Blanchard. And he called her a fraud, saying that all of this because of her dad and stepdad giving her everything, which is not true. We all know that she worked real hard to make a name for herself, even though she takes advice from both of them. So Tessa had enough of them try to come out for a beatdown. Then all of a sudden, here comes Madman Fulton tried to attack her, but here comes Shamrock, who still has unresolved business with Fulton, but Fulton is obsessed with Shamrock. If you all recall last week, he just tossed him out of the out of the ring. Now, while Fulton and, and Shamrock were in the ring, Tessa and, and Sammy were in fact continuing their little fight out in the streets of New York City. Oh, I saw that. I saw that on Twitter. I just saw that. What do you think of it? Um, it worked. You know, yeah. Worked. I mean, to be honest with you, with the whole thing with the intergender matches, I think Impact are really trying to uh, make yeah. things different. I mean, like I like Tessa said, they are taking a leap of faith on this one because we're not going to able to see something like this with WWE or mm -hmm. AEW. But Impact really wants to do something different. You know, I mean, I'm not going to. The closest WWE did was the mix uh, tag. That whole mixed tag team tournament. Yeah. yeah, that's the closest we're going to get. But this one, 
is more full on with, with the whole thing. And then uh, Ronda Rousey and um, um, Kurt Angle versus. Uh... Oh yeah, that too. So that's what we got for Impact. Uh, I hope we can continue more with this, but like I said, let's continue on with the show. All right, Nico. Hmm. Right now we just went to week 12 on the Wednesday Night War. So if everybody wants to know who won this week, even though we here for us doesn't matter, you know. But in case you guys want to know who won, it's NXT. The view ships they got for this one is 795,000. Uh, AW got six hundred and eighty three hundred thousand. So basically, they won this week. I mean, does it does it matter now about who won this? Mm, I think it does because like a lot of uh, AEW, um, um, I say fans, not necessarily fans, but like the diehards or what I like to call the tryhards. They will like make any type of excuse for like why something is this or that instead of just like owning up to it and being all like, well, just you know, just lost. Mm -hmm. You just lost that one right there. And then on top of that, it's like I think it's funny that like they like a lot of the AEW, like they'll do like uh, like their advertisement is like, oh, we're beating NXT and da 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 da, where NXT is just doing what WWE always does and just puts on a good show. Yeah. And then blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So let's start with NXT since they won this week. Uh, of course, they throw in the recap from last week. As always, we always seen those type of things. Yeah. But the first match they started out was for the NXT Championship match. Mm -hmm. Finn Balor versus Adam Cole. Now, that was the opening? Mm-hmm. They've been doing that a lot lately where they have the championship match. I mean, there have been... I mean, there has been a lot of success with that. You know, I'm not going to say it's wrong, because remember, yeah. like, I think the initial thought from us fans is, like, yeah. for Vince, it's always been, like, the championship match has to be at the end. Yeah. But who said that it has to be? Yeah. You know? Like, well, like, with, for this episode, it still was the, the, the closer, but it was the women's, like, they, the, mm -hmm. like they wanted that spot for them. Yeah. So, we'll, so I, I get that. Yes. Yeah. That we'll, we'll get to that part in a bit. But this one was a very interesting, a very intense match between Balor and Cole because, as you all recall, Balor's been going on saying that his past is his future. Mm -hmm. Basically being back to the prince that he was back in Japan. Mm -hmm. And as for Adam Cole, he's trying to prove that he is one of the greatest NXT champions of today. Mm -hmm. And of course, Balor's not going to take that too lightly out of, out of this. So... I mean, they were going in back and forth with some great in-ring maneuvers. You know, a lot of the super kicks and all this other stuff. I was like, I think every fan was uh, up out in their feet on this one. Like, because I think it could go either way, whoever mm -hmm. wins this match. I'm not going to say who, who I was voting for. I mean, it could go either way. But when it seems like Balor was about to take the victory on this one, we get the surprising return of Johnny Wrestling himself. Mm -hmm. Now, Balor acted like he was seeing a ghost. I mean, since we're in a holiday uh, spirit, is the ghost of Christmas past. So, that's what it was for him. And, of course, because he got distracted looking at Gargano, the, he lost the, uh, the cha uh, this championship match leaving Adam Cole to take the victory. But, of course, Johnny Gargano hasn't forgotten the last time he was face-to-face -face with, with Balor. Yeah. If you all recall, Balor decided to attack uh, Johnny Gargano because he was getting sick and tired of Johnny Gargano being that guy who's taking all the spotlight. And he felt like he had to pluck him out. But now Johnny Gargano is back and he is not done yet. Now there's an exclusive interview that he that he posted. He said this, Balor, you're right. Your the past is the future, so it's still uh, 
So basically, whatever Johnny Gargano saw, saw in that, he's decided to agree with him. So, looks like this war between those two is going to continue on, or should I say, escalate a lot more further than we're going to realize. There, I'm, we probably will see a match between those two down the line. Then uh, we had uh, that recap of that um, of between Pete Dunne Damian Priest and Killian Dane. Now, as you all recall, this took place in War Games. Yes. And Pete Dunne won the vic- won the match, and he was the number one contender for the NXT Championship at Survivor Series. But because of that, uh, there was supposed to be a match between Damian Priest and Killian Dane last week, but Damian Priest was unable to compete due to his busted ribs. Right. That led to what happened at uh, War Games. But this time they made this match happen. I, I like. I always suspected they were gonna not let this one. Uh, how to say? Get past because they had to do this match. Now, this one was also another intense match because this rivalry was so different and unique in its own way. Like, Bill, uh, Killian Dan was attacking Pete Dunne, but later he attacked. Damien Priest. So basically, it was more like, like, Killian Day made the mistake in attacking Damien Priest. But Killian Day is the kind of guy who doesn't care anymore. Right. He just wants to dominate anybody. But this one was one of those matches like you weren't sure because Damien was still injured from those ribs from War Games. So the pro- but like anybody would say, they want to continue on regardless of how injured they were. And, man, Damien Priest impressed me a lot. I mean, if you guys know who he was prior before he was known as Damien Priest, like Nico yeah. and I know, he was known as Punishment Martinez. But I have to say he is impressing me right now with NXT. What do you think? Yeah, I like him in, um, in what's it called, NXT. Um, and anytime, they, anytime I see a new heel, I'm automatically going to be drawn to them, especially if they have really good my skills. Nice little promo, uh, promos. I like his little vignettes that go along with his whole like character, mm-hmm. and the whole uh, Archer thing. Um, I like that. So yeah, so thing. Damien Priest took the victory on this one, which I was like very happy with because he deserved to be pushed too, you know. Yeah. Then the greatest news happened after the match is the return of the Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic, mm. returning in twenty twenty. I mean, what do you think? Uh, the the tag team division is kind of stale. It's very like I don't know. Like I think right now the, the we have seen some strong tag teams with NXT. Yeah, they have strong. Yeah, they have strong tag teams, but the division as a whole is kind of stale. It's kind of like with my beloved New Japan. Their tag team division is kind of stale, with the exception of their junior tag team division. Like there's there's a lot more singles competitors. Uh, with the male division, I've noticed that. Yeah, yeah. We'll make a talk about tag tag teams in due time. You know, mm-hmm. we'll get our thoughts on this one. But they're still yet to announce who are the participants for this. You know, but my assumption, I do know that Bobby Fish and Kyle O'Reilly are going to participate in this one. Oh. You know, so that's one I can think of. Then we had a match between Cameron Grimes versus Kushida. This one was interesting because Kushida stole Cameron Grimes' uh, hat. <laughs> let's just say, what, this, let's start how this whole thing began between these two. Uh, what happened is, if you all remember, uh, not like two months ago, Kushida was in a match with Walter and he wasn't successful, but he threw out his best... Um, match ever with Walter, you know? He botched a Hurricane Rana. Yeah. And then the Walter saved it. And not and for this, a wa uh Kushida actually injured his, his hand. Yeah. So he was out of action for two months. Now he was booked what two, three weeks ago, somewhere around there. He was supposed to face against Raul Mendoza, but Cameron Grimes decided that he wanted to beat the welcome mat. Mm. You know, the guy who takes him out completely, and he took out Raul Mendoza. And, frankly, Kushida took the victory on this one. And Cameron Grimes was not too happy that he lost, 
So he took him out in uh, at the performance center, but Raul Mendoza wanted revenge for what Cameron Grimes did to him. And Kushida comes out running the distraction on Cameron Grimes, and Kushida took his hat. Mm. So basically, this was more of a retribution thing for Cameron Grimes. Not only because he lost to Kushida a couple weeks ago, it's because he took the one thing that is precious to him. Right. The hat. So, you know, cool. yeah. I mean, we've seen people that have stray, uh, some interesting items with them. And, of course, Cameron Grimes took the victory on this one. But I'm not sure if they're going to continue on between the, this robbery between the two of them. Because I know there could be great other robberies for Kushida to go up against. Well, slow down there. I think Cameron Grimes and Kushida would be a good rivalry. They both have similar uh, in-ring um, abilities. And like the whole like uh, build-up with, um, with uh, Cameron Grimes having these squash matches up until now, and then the debut of Kushida... Like I'd like I I think they I think with their chemistry they could have some some classics some possible NXT classics yeah yeah then we jump in with Io Shirai versus Santana Guerrero now I want to pause here for a little bit mm-hmm. I want you to tell me if you heard anything about this I, I'm trying to find out if this information was mm-hmm. true coming from one of the commentators they're saying this that Io Shirai is engaged with a guy who calls himself evil Ooh. I'm like. I'm like saying, wait a minute, are you talking about evil, you know, mm. evil from New Japan? Mm-hmm. And there's words saying that those two are engaged. I'm like, we haven't heard anything about that because much of wrestlers in Japan, they like to keep things private. Oh, yeah, most definitely. You know, but if they are, I mean, it would make one thing perfect sense. Mm. We had uh, one of the Long Beach events not a, a couple months back. Mm-hmm. Ayo Shirai and Kyra Sane were attendants there. I saw that. Yeah. So, is it possible that she was there also not only to attend but also to support evil? Mm. I mean, this is one of those things we always try to catch on. But if it is, then how long have they been together? Mm. Because, like I said, much of the Japanese wrestlers like to keep their private lives private. Yeah. You know, I mean, I'm not holding it against it, but this is information that's, like, now be coming out in the air, you know. Mm-hmm. They're kind of like, okay, is this true or not? But if it is true, well, at least we'll be happy to know that, you know, something good out, out of this mm-hmm. happens, you know. So, now back into Ayo Shirai versus Santana Garrett. So, as you all know, Santana Garrett, she's very good at in-ring work, but this is, I think, her second or third being on a live on a televised NXT, she's only been recently been doing live shows. Mm. But this was interesting because she was facing the genius of the sky, Iro Shirai. We all know her reputation and all that. So, as for uh, as much as I want to see Santana Garrett, uh, one there is that whole thing with Iro Shirai, who is trying to get back in the game to get the. NXT Women's Championship. Yeah. You know, that's like, this is one of those important matches where I sure I has to work her way from the bottom to the top. You know, but of course she took the victory on this one. Now, I want you to tell me what you think about this. Yeah. Around the Royal Rumble, they're going to have NXT versus NXT UK. Ooh. What, what, what do you think of this? Should be good. I mean, look, like I said, like, before, like not too long ago, we haven't been hearing much about the NXT UK, mm. you know. But I was able to find some videos. Mm. Now, I haven't had the chance to watch it, but I'm gonna watch them all. Give my best thoughts of NXT mm. UK. Now, there are those are saying the, this from um, the they're trying to build NXT Japan and and Mexico, and these countries are saying that they're a little worried to have them because uh, they're saying that the NXT UK is a bit of a failure, you know? Because we haven't been hearing much about them. No. You know, but like I said, I have these videos. I'm going to go over them one by one to see what is it about them that they're saying if it's a failure, you know? If there is a failure, then... Well, sorry, you kind of messed up on that part yourselves. 
But if there are some good things on this, then at least, okay, I'll, I'll be sold to it. Yeah, the only NXT UK episode I ever watched was when Finn Balor was on it. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, but this one will take place around the Royal Rumble week. Mm. So, if you guys have the WD Network, then you guys know what to do on that. Mm. Now, the next match, this one, we're getting two wrestlers that actually are from the NXT UK. Were, were or should I say? Pete Dunne versus the Kiwi Buzzsaw, Travis Banks. Mm -hmm. Now, as you all know, Pete, there, there has been reports coming in about Pete Dunne. They're asking him where his allegiance lies. Now, we're not going to deny that he, was, he came from NXT UK. Mm -hmm. But that is a good question. I mean, we now know he's been making a name for himself in NXT. Or as we as people will like to call it, the NXT U US in some ways, but we still haven't heard anything about that. Mm. Like Pete hasn't given his straight up answer. I I don't know if he's like how to say doesn't know what to say, or he's conflicted, or however you want to see it. But as for Travis Barker or Travis Banks. Mm -hmm. sure. We all know where he's from. He's now making a lot of noise ever since he beat uh, Jackson Riker of the Forgotten Sons a week ago. So this was an interesting match between two guys that were part of the NXT UK. Like, I, I see Travis Bar uh, Banks, an amazing uh, high flyer, you know? He's always taking a lot of uh, risk. As for the Bruiserweight, we know his reputation. You know, he was the first uh, NXT UK champion. Now, how long he had the title? More than 400 days? I think right around there. Yeah, oh, somewhere around there, yeah. But, yeah. But Pete Dunne took the victory on this one. But he actually extended his hand to, to Travis. Like, I think... I don't think right now it matters for Pete Dunne who is allegiance. Mm. As long as he shows the world who he really is. I think that's what... He wants to show for. Him. Then they had an interview with Dakota Kai, who she's not like how to say doesn't care about what Mia Yim did to her. Mm. Her only concern is that she wants to get her hands on the NXT Women's Championship. So she said that she, if if she has to beat the whole roster down to get to there, then that's what's going to be. So we will just got to wait and see where she's going to go with it because. She doesn't seem like care what what Mia Yim did. No. Now, we go to the main event that became the highlight of the night. Rhea Ripley versus Shayna Baszler. Now, what were your initial thoughts prior before this match? I should have watched it because I'm dumb. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I was saying, what are your initial <laughs> thoughts before this? Like, <sighs> how to, like, how, um, what do you, um, you think you could have expected? It's about damn time that fucking someone uh, took the belt from um, Shayna Baszler. I guess they were just fighting like the right one, and they 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 hit it right on the on the hit it right on the head with uh, Rhea Ripley. Like she's, I have to say, she's, she's got that it that it. I have to say, Rhea Ripley kind of impressed me a lot. Yeah, you know when. Seeing her on NXT, it was like because she was the first NXT UK Women's Champion, yeah. the very first, and now she wants to be the first woman to carry both NXT Women's Championships from both NXTs. Oh, we got record. This, the double champion fever is spreading. <laughs> who, who 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 think we should thank that? <laughs> should we thank Naito for that? Yeah, yeah, we'll we'll thank him for that on, on email. <laughs> but uh, man, it was like. An impressive match. Like, mm -hmm. we had been seeing Shayna Baszler was saying, you know, that she was going to put her to sleep or make her tap out. You know, but Rhea Ripley was showing a lot of heart and determination mm -hmm. that she's not going to back down no matter what Shayna Baszler was about to do to her. Yeah. You know, because she, and if you recall, she, uh, what happened is she got disqualified because of uh, because of what Shayna Baszler tried to do. Right. She, because technically, Shayna Billy should have known, you did not tap her out. Mm -hmm. You did not put her to sleep. That doesn't count on your record. If you wanted to put someone to sleep, that should have been on your record. But Ripley proved it. 
You did not put her in that position. You missed the chance and you blew it. And you just thinking, oh, it's done. Mm. You should have known better. You should not have let it slide. But that's on your own uh, consequences. But I have to say the way Real Ripley took the win, it was amazing. And if you, I don't know if you saw this, there was a mosh pit going on mm. for the celebration. I mean, everybody comes down. I see Candice LeRae was right there. Mm -hmm. You know, the one person that Ray Ripley knows she can count on. And, of course, the person who won with her at the War Games. So we're expecting great things for Ripley, Ray Ripley to be in NXT. I mean, I'm sure she's going to give a beautiful speech next week. Yeah. You know. But the real question is, is this. Is Shayna Baszler going to cash in on her rematch clause? Mm. Because there has been talk recently that they should try to push Shayna Baszler now into the main roster. Yes and no, because... Start, with, yes. start out with the yes. With the yes? yes. Start out with the yes. Why yes? Why yes? Because I can see where they're going with that. Um, they want to. They're. They've been wanting to do the horsemen versus the horsewomen versus horsewomen. And I think what they wanted to do first was build up Shayna Baszler, let her drop the belt. So, uh, WrestleMania is coming up. Ronda Rousey's going to come back. The whole the the the. The WWE oh. horsewomen, they're kind of like, like, not really on the same team, but they're kind of fighting everyone else. So I see Shayna Baszler and her cohorts coming up to the main roster will unify the WWE's horsewomen so that we can get that horsewomen versus horsewomen um, rivalry that, that, yeah. that was scheduled for last year but never happened. Yeah, and what's the no side? What's the no? That's going to ruin Shayna Baszler's uh, singles um, push. Like yeah. she's, gonna, she's not going to be as big as she was before. No, but there yeah. is a, there's a theory about this that, uh, that my brother kind of put out. Huh. Um, that if you all recall, Becky Lynch always had a bit of a, in the story-wise, uh, mm -hmm. issues with um, Ronda Rousey. Yeah. And she looks at Shayna Baszler as like, you're just like her. Yeah. You know? I have no problems taking you out the way I did with her. Right. And Shayna Baszler will look at it as like, since you have problems with us for where we come from, then I'm going to take you out. What if Shayna Baszler challenged her for the title? Mm. The proof, her point. You know, I mean, what, what do you think of that likely scenario? Um, I can see that. I can see that being a good way to, like, ignite the, the, the war. Between the, the, the yeah, women. so uh, my brother kind of believes okay, if Shayna be uh, Baszler beats uh, Becky Lynch for the title, mm -hmm. that kind of will spark Becky Lynch to approach Charlotte Flair, ba uh, Bailey, and Sasha to mm -hmm. reform the four horse woman while Shayna Baszler and her two other cohorts are with her, and then mm -hmm. we'll expect the return of Ronda Rousey. Jessima Duke and the other one. Yeah, I, I, I can't. I'm sorry, folks. We, yeah, sorry. I can't. We, it's hard to re remember their names. You know, they need to put. They need to. They need to compete more. Like, why aren't they? Why aren't they a tag team yet? Why are? Why is? They're why? more. Well, as you watch too many of those uh, TV series, mm -hmm. we like look at them as hench women. Uh -huh. That's the reason. I mean, can we just give that up with the whole hench women and let them be the tag team? Yeah. Like, let them be the stable faction of the uh, for, uh, the horse women of MMA yeah. that they're supposed to be, and let them compete for the ta uh, the women's tag team more often. You know, but precisely that's what they should have done first. Mm -hmm. So, so that's what happened on NXT uh, this past Wednesday. Now let's go with Dynamite. Mm -hmm. awesome. Now. I don't know why it was so low. I actually enjoyed that last episode. Yeah. Well, there was yeah. a lot of good stuff. Well, it there. started out with a tag team match between Kenny Omega and Handman Page versus the Lucha Brothers. Now, if you guys follow the story closely mm -hmm. between Kenny and Handman, Hangman has been decided to step away from the Elite. Yes. Because he's been feeling a little doubt of the losing streak. Mm-hmm. 
but Kenny kind of felt he could trust them the most. Mm-hmm. And the last last week, things kind of went a little bit like, okay, what just happened? Like, uh, Handman just stole the win from Kenny. Mm-hmm. But Kenny's like, okay, you know, a win's a win. Not going to argue. And Kenny has no reason to question him. Yeah. But uh, I think Kenny is trying to, how to say try to see if he can pull him back in. Like, say, look, I know you've been in the slump. I've been in the slump, too. Mm-hmm. You know, I understand where you're coming through. You know, so that's what he's trying to do. Like, try to get him in the same page. You know. But, frankly, the Lucha Bros took this victory. Mm-hmm. But, because of this, Pac sent a message to Omega. Telling him that he wants his rubber match. Well, before Pac did his uh, 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 screen promo, there was uh, there looked like there was going to be tension boiling over with Kenny Omega and uh, Hangman Page. Yeah. And then like I think at first I didn't like it, but then I was like, ooh, that's good writing for a tease. They kind of teased it by interrupting it with uh, Pac um, uh, having a Nakazawa. Nakasawa. Nakasawa. <laughs> Well, it's because here's the thing. Kenny, we know he's been in a slump as well. Mm-hmm. But he found retribution to get uh, that little rematch with Pac that he had. Mm-hmm. That he lost it all out. But Pac, we all know he doesn't take losses like that too likely. Uh-huh. So he decided to, uh, as we say, kidnap Michael Nakasawa. Yeah. But it's still unclear where he went or where he was gone to. Mm-hmm. But hopefully we get to see what's going to happen. Where we go then? Then uh, we jump in to the interesting tag team match hmm. between the Butcher and the Blade alongside the Bunny yeah. versus Darby Allen and Cody. Initial thoughts on that? Uh, I didn't think I was going to like these dudes at first until I actually seen them wrestle. I like the Butcher and the Blade. Um, and there's another thing that I noticed. Um, as much as I don't like Excalibur, He's really good at uh, making making like excuses for like for like an in ring botch. Like one thing, like I couldn't help myself. Like I was like, ah, um, Darby Allen botched a, a low a low rope um, suicide dive. Yeah. And, uh, and Excalibur uh, cleaned it up by saying like, oh well, did you see how he he went for the low rope um, uh, suicide dive instead of the where Cody went for the. Yeah, uh, the middle rope one, and I was like, no, he botched the shit out of it because he didn't even connect with the. I don't know if it was the butcher or the blade or both, but um, there was no connection at all, and he kind of just fell. And I was like, ah, that's bad. <laughs> yeah, but if you recall in this match, um, Darby Allen made the stipulation: yes. if Cody and Darby win this match, then they get to do the little rematch that mm-hmm. um, that they had from. Fighter Fest, mm-hmm. and which they did. Yes. If you all recall, in Fighter Fest, it was a time limit draw. Basically, mm-hmm. it was a tie. But as many people say, you can't let a tie stand. So there has to be a winner between those two. So I don't think Cody has a problem with it. You know, no. like he's like saying, you know what? You're right. You know, we both had a tie for that match. Let's let's break the tie. You know. So what better way to do that? It's like. I think Darby Allen was waiting for the right moment right. to happen. Then we see a little training video of Jungle Boy. Mm-hmm. You know, people are like now talking about him more. You know, I mean, we all know about his personal life that we've been hearing about a lot. But people are saying, I mean, he's what twenty two, twenty three, um, somewhere around there. It was a good match, though. Yeah, that was a good match. But we'll get to that. Then we had a little. Um, Let's call it a squash match on this one mm-hmm. between Awesome Kong and this person named Miranda Elise. Uh, and a, a, apparently, Awesome Kong wasn't alone. She had Brandy Rhodes and yeah. uh, Melanie Cruz, the the new, the latest, one of the latest members of the Nightmare Collective. Uh, I kind of skipped all that because I don't know where they're going. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that's hard to follow for me. Basically, if you call, recall. There's the Nightmare Family. I those. get it. I get all that. But this one is more of like a, how do I say, uh, how can I put it, uh, like a separatist group or something, 
or a splinter group, however yeah. you want to call it. So basically, Brandy a has subgroup. yeah of the of the Nightmare family. Yeah. So basically, she's going trying to recruit people, yeah. you know, and the person on her list is the alien Chris Satlander. Oh yeah, she she definitely wants so. That. But we'll go from there. We'll get to that in a bit. Now, JR did a little interview about uh, with Jungle Boy, asking him about does he feel any pressure knowing about this match because mm. the stipulation is he has to last ten minutes. Yeah. But for Jungle Boy, he is not an idiot. He's not a fool. He knows yeah. what he's going himself into. He knows who he's facing. He's facing the Le Champion, the, uh, the legend himself. You know, the veteran wrestler. He knows who Jericho is. He's done his homework. He's seen mm -hmm. his work. He's not a fool. He's not, like, saying, I'm not going to go jump into a match against a guy like him. I got to prepare myself to last that long. So he knows it. So, but J JR kind of asked him this question. If his father was still alive, what do you think he would say to him? Mm -hmm. He told him that he would be proud of him. I mean, yeah, like any father would. You know. And then... And then we jump into that match. Yes. It was a interesting match because we're like we're like everybody was pulling through for Jungle Boy the entire time. Well, I knew he wasn't going to win, but I mean. but he was able to last ten yeah. minutes. But keep in mind, yeah. there is no winner on this one. Well, no. Basically, if if Jericho was able to either submit him or pin him before. The time's up, then right. he wins. Or the same thing with Jungle Boy, but it didn't happen. Yeah. But well, if, well, the purpose of well, the purpose of this match and the purpose of Chris Jericho's presence in AEW is to build up for the new talent. And instead of him just coming in and hitting the Judas effect, winning and leaving, he did like the full ten minute plus, asked for five minutes, and then um, and basically he hella got Jungle Boy over. With the with the what's it called count out? Yeah, not to mention um, Jungle Boy's uh, mom, his sister, and I'm assuming his grandma's right there on the right side. Yeah. Basically, his family was there, but Jericho cannot let this stand, you know, in that he yeah. cannot. I mean, it's the same thing that happened with Scorpio Sky, where he got pinned yeah. by him in that tag team match. And of course, on the side, we did see both uh, Hagar, as always, in Jericho's side. We did see Luchasaurus and Marco with um, with Jungle Boy, and then of course mm -hmm. the brawl between Luchasaurus and Hagar. I mean, I know I think we're all asking when is that going to happen between. Yeah, I mean, like, I'd like to see it, but I wish they would have. I don't know. It just seemed a little little sloppy. But we got to remember another thing about Hagar. Um, aside from him being an AEW, he's also mm -hmm. an MMA fighter in right. Bellator. Bellator. We just don't know. How his schedule is, mm. you know, is he scheduled to be in another fight anytime soon? You know, sometimes we have to understand, okay, just because he's in AEW, but we would like to see him wrestle. Right. But we just don't know how much of his, uh, how to say, appearance is, uh, is able to be for him to be in the match just yet. But like I said, we just don't know yet if uh, Hagar is scheduled to be in another fight anytime soon or, or what. But I'm assuming there will be a time when that will happen. We just got to be patient about it. You know. So uh, let's go in for this one with the number one contendership for the women's title. Oh. Between Britt Baker and uh, Chris Satlander. Now, let's start mm -hmm. with Chris Satlander, how this come about. Mm. Now, if you all remember, um, prior for that, for the, st for the ranking... Um, Emi Sakura was number three in the rankings, mm -hmm. and Hikaru Shida was number one. Yeah. Now, if you saw this, Chris Sandler pulled the biggest upset, mm. defeating Emi Sakura. Now, this match kind of gave headways, mm -hmm. pu uh, pushing Emi Sakura as number three, and no, uh, Hikaru Shida number three, Emi Sakura number five. Now that kind of Change the rankings, and it put both Britt Baker and Chris Sadler as one and two. Hmm. But at the same time, we've been seeing the Nightmare Collective want to recruit her. Yes. You know, 
Like, they really want her to be part of the group so bad. Like, the alien, want, they want the alien to join. Mm -hmm. But the alien had made promos where she said that she doesn't consider herself like a follower. Right. She considered herself as a leader. Which, I don't know if, she, if they're thinking about making an alien faction or something. I mean, that would be interesting. But yeah. I don't see why not. They got a dinosaur faction. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's that too. But yeah. And then we got this whole thing with the number one contendership between Chris Allen and Dr. Britt Baker. Mm. Since these two are the top rankings, so the only logical choice. Now, you probably ask yourselves, where was Rio the entire time? If you must know. She was in the crowd. No, like throughout the entire time when oh, this whole thing, okay. when the rankings. If yeah. you must know, Rio also has another commitment with Stardom. Yeah. You know, she's the high speed champion for yeah. Stardom. So basically, she has that commitment too. So she was in Japan uh, much of that time as while well, she was the AEW champion. But um, we did saw Rio, she was there, you yeah. know, watching who was going to win between these two. Now, we both have known Britt Baker should have been champion. Long ago, yeah. you know, because not not to mention she was the first female to be signed yeah. with AW. Either her or or uh, or uh, what's it called? Ah, um, uh, fuck. Shira uh, no, Hikaru Shida. Hikaru Shida, yeah, yeah. So basically, this is one of those matches where we're seeing more uh, women try to be pushed more. Yeah, you know, and Chris Atlander is the how to say. An example that she's one of those unique characters, mm -hmm. you know. But uh, if you got and the winner for this one was Chris Satlander. I think Rio's like a little bit concerned, mm. knowing she's facing against the alien. So, but right after the match, we see the Nightmare Collective showed up. Now they have been asking her to join the the collective, but Chris Satlander's response. She didn't have to say it. Right. She just said. Hmm. And of course, that did not take it. Uh, Brandy did not take that too lightly. So, but we uh, we just got to wait and see what's going to happen. But right after the beatdown, we did see Sadie Gibbs come out mm -hmm. to help her escort her to the back. But I'm not sure if this is going to, uh, if Brandy Rhodes is going to try to run interference on her on Satlander's quest to become champion. Right. That's one of those things because we don't know if she still wants her to join because Satlander has no intentions of joining the collective. She, like she said in the promo, she wants to be the leader of the alien, uh, the, the alien leader that she wants to be. So that's one of those things that is going to happen. But we just got to pay attention when uh, where it's gonna go with it? Then we see a little backstage uh, conversation between Tully Blanchard and Spears. Now, if you all recall, they're making uh, AEW has been making headways with the tag team division. Yes, you know they're making the tag team division very strong. We have seen oh, some yes. great matches. You know, I mean, we can say Prior Party are now becoming oh. more. Recognizable. Like the tag team division is the reason why I end up watching AEW over NXT. <laughs> yeah. So basically, Spears is starting to see, okay, look, maybe I don't have to be a, a singles competitor. Mm -hmm. You know, now that the tag team division is becoming strong and well known, yes. I need to have a partner to get to the top of that. Mm -hmm. So Tully, if you guys know his history, uh, he himself was a tag team champion with... Mm -hmm. On his fellow Four Horsemen member, Art Anderson. Mm -hmm. So basically, Tully, he's not, let's just say he's not the master of being a single competitor, no. but he's also the master of tag teams. Mm -hmm. So basically, Spears knows he can trust Tully's um, genius where he's going to go. But the key thing what they're, that Tully's trying to do is find the right partner. The right partner that fits the caliber that he needs to make a great tag team as he said so i'm assuming they're gonna go out throughout the throughout the entire aw dynamite looking for the right guy uh, I'll, I'll guarantee you that they're gonna be scouting 
you know, in any match. It doesn't matter if it's in AEW Dark or in Dynamite. Or well, they might be bringing someone else that's finished with their contract elsewhere. Yeah, true. We can see that too. Now let's jump in with the the main event. Mm-hmm. The Young Bucks versus SCU. This time for the World Tag Team Championship. Now, as you all fans out there who've been diehard Buck fans, mm-hmm. we have been seeing the Bucks been claiming themselves to be the best tag team in the world, but they have felt they have been lying not only to themselves, but to all you guys. But this time they wanted to prove themselves that, okay, we have been lying to ourselves, we just needed to prove it, that we are actually keeping the word. Mm-hmm. And this was that opportunity to see. I mean, what are your thoughts about this match? Um, I I really, really liked it. Uh, uh, Scorpio Sky and... Uh, Frankie Nick and Nick Jackson mm-hmm. were the the main were the stars of like that whole match. Um, I always say that with whatever whenever the Young Bucks are in a match with Nick, like mm-hmm. even when I met them, it was obvious that I like Nick more than that. <laughs> <laughs> like I, I I was actually talking to him more, <laughs> but um, yeah, Nick kills it. And uh, Scorpio Sky is very, very athletic. And then when you get Frank Frank Kazarian in the mix, he's he's that powerhouse. You know, it's like funny. And we see the same thing with the Lucha Brothers mm-hmm. as well. Like, there's always that one guy who's the how to say the bronze, mm-hmm. and then you got the the athletic person. Yeah. We we have been seeing that with mm-hmm. with Lucha Brothers with the Bucks, even uh, SCU. You know, we have, and I think we're seeing that with the Butcher and the Blade as well. Yeah. You know, but, I mean, that's a unique concept in tactics, yeah. the way we have seen in recent uh, recent months. But I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I mean, yeah. it's unique. You know, Like, how the how they used to do it, they used to make, make it painfully obvious by putting, like, a, a giant guy with a smaller guy. Mm-hmm. Like, one of my favorite uh, would be uh, Kane and Xbox. <laughs> yeah. Like, I like that. <laughs> But the victory comes down to this one was SEU. Yep. You know, I got no problem with that one either way. But the interesting is at the end of the match. I turned it off. I had to go to sleep after <laughs> after one, two, three. I turned the TV okay, off. Okay. <laughs> if you want to know what happened, huh? The creepers start to show up. Oh, these slobs! But this time it wasn't just an initial attack. Uh. It was initiation. Hmm. They said they are introducing two new members. Yeah. And the two members were Alex Reynolds and John Silver. They've basically been recruiting the ones that have been on a losing streak. Huh. And, of course... The is getting jobbed out. Yeah. And then we see uh, others trying to help the Bucks and SCU. Uh, we see CD trying to give the helping hand. We see Cody and Dusty and Omega, but... Like, the Creepers will keep multiplying. Yeah. As, uh, I think JR said that entirely. But, uh, but it was, um, it's still unclear what, uh, what the, the Dark Order's motives are. You know, other than trying to recruit. You know, like, any faction we have seen over the years, you know, like, we can go from NWO, uh, DX, or the Four Horsemen, or any, any faction, doesn't matter who. Mm-hmm. There's always motives why they want to why they're doing this right. you know i think i think they're building that whole thing with the dark order you know like okay let's introduce the dark order as a first as a tactic but now let's give them that whole stable faction look you know recruiting uh people who fit their caliber what they're looking for mm. you know and that's kind of like the result we're seeing with uh, uh john silver and alex reynolds like say okay we are in a losing streak let's join them but it's like you you see Evil Uno, he's like the mastermind of the whole thing, and then you see the Stu Grayson, he's the the enforcer. I mean, your initial thoughts on that? I don't like the Dark Order. I'd rather watch the Best Friends wrestle. Than <laughs> than the Dark Order. I think they're trash, and that's why they surround themselves with a bunch of bunch of creepers. <laughs> yeah. So that's what happened on the on uh, AEW Dynamite. But I want to uh, inform all of you. This was already announced. This was the last episode of the year. Yes. So basically, you're not going to see 
AEW next week or well next week. Basically, yeah. if you guys must know, it's Christmas. Open it's some Christmas. Presents, eat some cookies. At least, un- unlike I don't like to badmouth anybody. Unlike WWE, they always have their talent work through the holidays. It's that McMahon money, dude. <laughs> but AEW are more how to say. Family free. They're they're more about the the uh, yeah the family and the talent. They want they 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 want to show that the talent the talent matters. Yeah. So work, but they are gonna resume back into dynamite again on January first. There's when, really gonna be an NXT this this uh, this this Thursday this uh, Wednesday. I I think so because they made that announcement. That's crazy. I mean, I, if it was me, I would rather just give the wrestlers the week off. You know, give them time to rest, give them time to their family. But as McMahon is, you know, he's all about time is money. Well, the NBA does the same. Well, I think it has to do with the NBA having uh, their uh, their Christmas game. So, yeah. TNT. So, just to let you guys know, so basically, um, there will be no AEW Dynamite, but they will return on January 1st because... It would lie as the anniversary when they first launched. Yes. So that's an important thing. So don't forget. So that's what we got for the Wednesday Night War. So basically there will be no Wednesday Night War next week. At least check out Being the Elite. That too. <laughs> <laughs> so, or AW Dark. AW Dark. So, yeah, that too. yeah, so we'll, we'll be back with some more. Mm-hmm. Stop it. All right, guys, so the last thing I want to do is throw in a little bit of the news updates. Yes. Uh, if you all know, I like I said, I haven't been talking about Dragon Gate that much, mm-hmm. but I want to give you guys an interesting news. Uh, Dragon Gate announced they're going to do a reunion show called the uh, Tori Yumon uh, Reunion. If you guys don't know what that means, that was the name that Dragon Ultimo Dragon used prior before it was known as Dragon Gate. So they're going to have a little bit of a reunion show if you guys are Dragon Gate fans. But this is, will take place on Jan, uh, yeah, January 31st of 2020. Uh, hopefully I can find a way to watch it because it will be interesting. And the next news, Triple H is going to invade MLW. Yes. I, I don't know who will be there, but I'm like hoping I get to see uh, Psycho Clown. So mm. that's one of those wrestlers I want to see, but this will take place on uh, in Dallas on January 11th of 2020. I'm I'm sure that many of the MLW fans are excited to see AAA gonna be making appearance. I mean, we haven't seen them yet. I know the Impact has done work with them, and so is AEW. You know, but we're we're still waiting for some more on that. Mm. The net uh, the next news. Uh, if you guys remember these guys, former. Uh, WWE Tag Team Crime Time will are set to debut with Slam uh, uh, Slam Force Africa, the South American wrestling promotion. They are booked to wrestle uh, against um, interesting name, the Brotherhoods of Assassins. Kind of reminds me of Assassin's Creed. Mm. I wonder if that's where they got the name from. But who knows? And the final news: we're gonna have two promotions face off. Hmm. Bar Wrestling versus GCW. Hmm. That will take place on the 23rd of January of 2020 in Baldwin Park. Now, if you guys probably ask, how can you watch that one? If you guys uh, know who runs that promotion, that promotion, Bar Wrestling, is run by Joey Ryan. He may put some clips either on uh, his YouTube channel or if they'll put it up on on uh, if you have any of the networks, like for me, I can watch it on Defy Network. So that's what we got for now for the news update. But before we go, I want to give you guys a little announcement. Um, Nico and I are going to take a two week time off break, you know, give ourselves a chance to relax. Reason is next week is Christmas. And of course, we want to hang out with our families or do whatever we want or get drunk. Go to sleep. Go to sleep. I want to sleep. Or that. <laughs> you know, me, I'm working the freaking New Year's, you know. I always work New Year's because <laughs> I, work, I work at a bar. 
Like that's why I have no problem working New Year's. Like I'm, I'm, I'm already where you want to be on New Year's. <laughs> I already, I always work on New Year's. You know, yeah. like that. That's always been me right there every yeah. single time. But yeah, so we're gonna give ourselves a break. But mm-hmm. um, if you guys must know, I will continue throwing some wrestling content on my podcast. You know, like seven, like I'll be like Seven Eleven that never closes for Listen business. To that. So if you guys know where I'm actually. Uh, distributing the platforms I'm either in Spotify Google Podcast uh, Radio Public or Pocket Cast uh, Breaker or I forgot the other one but yeah so you guys can find me there on the, uh, the Apple Podcast one as well well they haven't uh, the they haven't uh, Anchor hasn't uh, informed me on that yet ah, okay. normally Anchor gives me the yeah. notification so that's the same thing that happened with me with uh, Spotify. Every like when I when I uh, uploaded all that, all of them came through like within a day. Mm-hmm. But then Spotify took forever. So yeah, so you guys can follow me on uh, more wrestling content on Spotify. Uh, if NXT is gonna do a a show on Wednesday, I probably will put that out on the podcast because mostly I do the podcast at my own house, you know, mm-hmm. because basically it's much nicer to be alone i mean i'm not trying to exclude him out i mean he has his own podcast uh riding the high horse uh the horse he rode it on the horse he rode in on yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you guys may have heard that term like like f you and the horse he rode in on <laughs> mm-hmm. so you can follow follow him on that podcast so we both have our own individual yeah. podcast so so that's why you know as much as i would like to have him on on the podcast but he has his own yeah. you know um and don't forget to buy that Selena De La Renta calendar for next year. Yeah, I know you guys right there <laughs> drooling right now. Uh, yeah. If you guys haven't seen Selena De La Renta, how sexy she is, look at her Twitter. Look at her Instagram page. You will know what he's look talking cut, about. Look at her cut promos, dude. <laughs> like, she just like, I don't know. Like, I'm torn right now. Like, you know, Selena Vega, Selena De La Renta. Hmm. It's like, hmm. <laughs> I think someone mentioned that on Twitter. I'm not sure, but we'll get to we'll get to that. But uh, but it is gonna make you jealous. She was here in San Diego. I know. Yeah. You know, I fucking like work. Ho- like a- Hopefully, if she comes back. <laughs> yeah. So we'll get to see that. So, like I said, we will take a two week mm-hmm. time off. Well, but like I said, you guys can catch me on the podcast. Uh, DWZ with J no, DWZ podcast with J Rod. I'll be on any almost every day or maybe once in a while of the day. I don't know however feels for me. Mm-hmm. But on behalf of the leader rest of the zone, I'm J Rod. Nico. We must bid all of you adieu, so goodbye. And well I'm gonna say, have a Merry Christmas. Bang! <laughs>